Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. Today we are gonna do something that's been requested and it is a 2023 plant tour. I'm gonna to show you all the plants I have right now and I'm not gonna lie, there are a few that are literally on the struggle bus and I'm gonna show them to you because I want you to know that plant keeping is not a perfect science. Sometimes you'll have plants that struggle and you don't know why, and sometimes you'll have plants that thrive and you don't know why. But all we can do is just do the best you can, and be inspired, and you know, do the best we can to take care of our, our green babies. Clean babies? Green babies. <laughs> so we're gonna start with this shelving system I have in my office. This has the most plants in one place on it. I installed this maybe in November, and it's been great. I, lo I love this thing and I put grow lights on the side there that come on automatically. They've started to come on in the middle of the night, which is not good. The timer on these is like super jankity jank. So eventually I may have to replace them with something a little more reliable, but they've been good. They were good. I mean, they were cheap. They were good for what they are and they matched the aesthetic of the, the whole thing. So I'll start at the top because then we can work our way down. On the top, we have a very gangly, Raphidophora tetrasperma. This is a hanging plant, but also it climbs. So I need to figure out a situation where I can probably put this on the floor and have it climb up a vine. The leaves do still split and this plant grows like a weed, but I just need to figure out its best location. It's probably not the top of here. It doesn't get as much light as it wants. This is Pothos, is this one Enjoy? I do believe this one is Pothos Enjoy. It's not pearls and jade. I know there are two very similar looking plants, but it's very cute. I got this maybe in October and it's adorable and I love it. I have a very weird Syndapsis Trubii Moonlight. This plant's super cute. It does look like it needs watered, but it's been a hanging plant and the leaves are so pretty. Look at those. Isn't that beautiful? They, they look blue. Up there, I do have another Scandapsis. This one, it desperately needs watered. You can tell because the leaves have started to curl inside, so I'll water this after I film this video, but it goes all the way over there to that side. It goes way down us on the floor, so I do need to cut it. And it's been going down this way as well. The leaves down here are really much bigger, which is weird, but it does, It's yeah, it needs watered. <laughs> Up here, we've got a little bit of a variety of weird ones. We've got a, uh, Thanksgiving cactus. There's, this is not a Christmas cactus, although a lot of these are referred to as Christmas cactuses. They're technically, it's Schlumbergera truncata, but there are a few versions of this. This one is the Thanksgiving version. There is a Christmas version and an Easter version. <laughs> so, but it did recently bloom. It was so pretty. I think I have a few pictures of it. It blooms every year for me now. I love this plant. It's so cute. And oh, look at the little baby leaf. How cute is that? Back there, we have a little Dracaena, Janet Craig. I mean, we won't talk about her. I, she, I neglected that plant for mm, a few months and all the leaves at the bottom fell off, but it's, going, it's doing better now, it's doing better now. <laughs> this is a plain heart leaf green philodendron where I took a cutting from my mom's house. She had a big old philodendron that was like 20 years old and she gave me a couple cuttings. Some of the cuttings actually died off, but this is the one that survived and I've had this for mm, maybe a year. Literally, I pulled this out of one pot and all the roots had root rot and I had to re-root it. So this, she's a survivor and look how well it's doing. It's just popping out new leaves. So I may cut it and stick some in some water to re-root them and then put them back to make a thicker plant. But I don't know, she's doing great. And she reminds me of my mom. This is the only fern I have, but this is a rabbit's foot fern. I forget the scientific name for it, but it's freaking adorable. It has these little, like feet that creep out. Some people they say they look like sp spider legs. <laughs> I can see that, but like, honestly, I think it's so cute. I think they do look like rabbit's feet. And it's the only fern in my collection and it, it does really well. It's very tolerant of like, if I forget to water it for a few days. So there it is. And it's in a, the cutest pot that I own. One of, I own three of these pots from Anthropology and this one got one and I'm so happy. <laughs> Here I have an Anthurium crystallinum. It has a couple of giant leaves. <laughs> I can't even get them all in the frame. This is the newest leaf. Like, look at her. I cannot with this. It's so pretty. And the leaves come out really small and they just get larger over time. So this is the newest leaf. It hasn't produced any new leaves in a few months. So I think it's spending a lot of energy just maybe in chilling for winter, but I can't wait till spring when it starts growing again. Super pretty. And the leaves are very velvety and soft. 
in the window I do have a little Peperomia scandens that is flowering it looks like there are a lot of inflorescences on this plant all over the place and if you don't if you have never seen a Peperomia flower or it's just this little rat tail looking thing. It's um, not a flower per se, it's an inflorescence, I guess. Um, and that is, I guess it's a happy little, happy little peperomia. It's very cute. All the leaves are faced towards the outside of the, <laughs> of the window, so you can't really see what it looks like. Here, I'll turn it so you can see. It looks, the leaves look like that. They're like little variegated. They're so cute. Below it, I have a little peperomia. This first looks sad. Peperomia tetragona, is that what this is called still? Um, she's struggling it's it hasn't given me a lot of growth over the past few years i've had it so we'll just see what becomes of her but isn't it it's the cutest it's so cute next i've got uh the hoya shelf so this is all hoyas and this is hoya carnosa crimson queen and she is the happiest for a year or so this plant did absolutely nothing like no growth nothing no new leaves nothing and all of a sudden it just started growing and it has this like mutated stem where all the leaves are white <laughs> isn't that pretty i expected these to die pretty quickly but they've been on this plant for close to a year so i don't know she's just been shooting out all these really weird white leaves but it's so pretty and this plant is really really happy and i'm i just it's doing its thing next i have a really weird uh hoya australis lisa this plant, this is my second Hoya Australis Lisa, that my first one just died off. It was like really little and I watered it once and then it just proceeded to die the slowest death I've ever seen. And I was like, well, I'll just try it again. And this one is much, much stronger. So I hope it does better than the other one. I've got, I've got a bunch of new growth on it. So I think I think it's gonna be okay. Back behind there is Hoya Wayetii. That one has bloomed for me. The, the blooms are so cute. They look like little candies and they smell really sweet. Uh, it hasn't bloomed for me in a while, but it did bloom for me earlier this year. It was so cute. This is Hoya Chelsea. Um, she's so strong, boss. I have one new leaf, <laughs> one. It's a little bit on the struggle bus. I'll see what I can do. I don't know, it's not the happiest. And I was very happy to get my hands on a Hoya Prolinura. This is the fishtail Hoya, uh, apt so named because of the way that the leaves look like fishtails, look like mermaid tails. I mean, it's so cute. Uh, it's really little, it's a baby, but I got it for a really good price at a rare plant store in Boston. And I can't wait to see it grow some more. Back there is Hoya Publicalix, kind of on the struggle bus. Another one on the struggle bus is a Hoya Sunrise. This plant was underwatered for a while. And I so I watered it and now it looks like a bunch of leaves are des desiccating. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of on a struggle bus. I will inform you what happens to this. I have too many plants on this shelf, but we're, we're vibing. It's fine. I've got a, a Pilea peperomioides that was struggling for a little bit, but it's doing not so bad now. I do turn it from time to time and it has a little baby there. It also has a couple of pups that I planted up over here. So those are doing well. So I, I don't know. It came back. Back here is Monstera siltipicana. The thing about this though is it started to climb up the curtain and I'm just gonna let it. <laughs> Here I have a asparagus fern. This one probably needs a water. I can see some of the leaves are yellow. Yikes. That means it's gonna go everywhere but it had spider mites and I cut the whole thing back and now it came back with a vengeance. So if your plant has spider mites and you can't get them all off just cut the whole thing down in the soil and you'll be fine. I've got a little baby What's this one? This one is Thematophyllum sprucianum, I think. I haven't seen much growth on this. It had a couple of new leaves and now it has just one new leaf. And this pair set of leaves, as you can see, looks like it's kind of wooden, about to, to die. So I don't know what to do about this, um, but at least it's in a cute pot. Look at her. If you wanna know, these pots were a collaboration between I think the artist is Marinsky. I looked at the bottom, Marinsky and Anthropology. They're not in production anymore, but she might have something similar on her website. I think they're absolutely adorable. Here's the other Marinsky pot. Isn't that so cute? So I love these. I'm so happy to get them. Okay, I'm gonna go faster. We have a Philodendron Florida, It's but it's baby. It's super, super baby. So the leaves aren't gonna be big for a while. And then I've got a Monstera Peru, which is there, which I really have to cut because what is this? Okay, here we have a fun thing. I broke a leaf off of my snake plant 
last year when we moved, in the move, and I rooted it, which took forever. And then finally, look at that little guy right there. Look at the little baby. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? It's so cute. Wait, focus, focus. It's so cute. So I have a little snake plant baby right there. So I'm so happy about this because for a while it was just sitting in the soil looking like this, like just a, just one leaf. And I was like, what's up with this thing? And finally I see a little growth on it. It's so cute. Here I just have like a little plant. My friend gave me a cutting of his Kalanchoe and I have Peperomia prostrata. It's doing this. And by doing this, I mean, it's putting out these little tiny runners. Um, this plant's tough. I will keep watering it, but it's tough. Down here, we have all the Calatheas in the world. We have Calathea freddi. This plant completely died back a few years ago where it was just a brown stump and all the leaves grew back. So I feel like a lot of people think that these just die, but they don't, they just die back. They go into dormancy. And if you keep taking care of it, to keep caring for it, it, it grew, grew, grew back and it even flowered for me. So um, don't think that your Calathea maybe died. If you can pull on some of the, um, the growth, actually, here's a plant that I believe is also going into dormancy. This was a variegated Maranta leucunora, and all the leaves died off. But I can still pull this and nothing comes out, so I think it's alive. I'm gonna keep caring for it and see if it comes back. So don't give up on your Calatheas. They may be just sleeping. Back there, I've got Stromanthe Magic Star. We've got a big, huge, massive Tenanthe Bromarxii. This plant was tiny when I got it and now it's a monster and I broke some of it when I was repotting it and I rooted it up and here is the little baby. Looks like one of the leaves has died off. I'll get rid of that but how cute, how cute is that? This plant is now the size that this was when I bought it. <laughs> so little baby, mama. Under the dome I have a one of the fuzzy jungle calathea but only a baby version. So um, I could, the name of this plant is very difficult to pronounce. I think it's Warzexii, 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 I forget, but I will put it on the screen. And if you know how to pronounce it, let me know. Here I have Calathea orbifolia. Again, this plant completely, I almost put this in the compost pile. It did not survive. Well, it did not really tolerate a period of being cold. We lost heat in our house last year for a couple days when we went out of town. And when I came back, this is what it looked like. Oh my gosh, because it was already like struggling before and then it just gave up all the will to live. And I just cut all the leaves off and just kept caring for it. And she back, she is back and looking healthier than it has ever looked since I had it. So again, don't give up on your Calatheas. They may just need a little extra TLC. Speaking of Calatheas, I have a brand new Calathea medallion. I did get rid of my last medallion because I thought it died, but I probably just died back. So we're experimenting with another one. This one has massive leaves. Like look at my hand and then there's the leaf. So it's really pretty. I hope it survives the winter. <laughs> and then we've got this giant lady. This is Stromanthe Trio Star. And this plant had some spider mite problems, but we beat them and now she's thriving, living her best life. Monstera adansonii, she's very, she's wild. <laughs> I think I may need to prune it a little bit, but she's living her best life here on this moss pole, having just a great time. Oh, and I have this silver stripe uh, epipremnum. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. It's a little bit crazy, but you know, for now we'll just put it on the shelf. And last but not least over here, we have Philodendron Gloriosum. This was a Christmas gift from my husband last year. I will put in a picture of what it looked like last year. I had one leaf and then it got thrips and I was about to lose my mind. And then I th treated it for thrips and now it's fine. So and it, these are all like new leaves and it's just such a cute little plant. Like look at these leaves, look at that. They're all, they're very um, velvety. This is the newest one, like, oh my gosh. So pretty. So I love this plant. It's a little leggy, but I think that these are crawlers, not climbers. So, and it's gonna look like that. Over in the corner, we have a big peace lily I got um, last year uh, from my dad's funeral. The church gave us a couple of peace lilies and I took the bigger one home uh, from Maryland and it's doing amazing here. It loves being next to this window and it's flowering a lot. Like here's, I guess, a new, a new spath here. They do smell really strong, which was really upsetting at first, but they're, they, I've gotten used to the smell. <laughs> yeah, there's an old one I need to cut off here. So a little plant maintenance later. I have a very leggy Monstera 
Deliciosa here. I did give it a grow light, so it's doing a little better, but she's, she's a little crazy. There's another plant on the struggle bus. This is a jade scandapsis. I don't know why it's on the struggle bus. I've looked at the roots. They look okay. So we're just going to keep on trucking, see how they do. I got a spider plant here. This is the mother plant of a baby. I'm going to show you the mother plant struggling. The baby plant's doing great. I don't know why. And up here, I just have some pothos that is a, well, epipremnum really, but it's J, uh, not jade. It is the Marble Queen pothos. And I have a little string of dolphins here that probably needs more light, but I think it's kind of cute when it's sort of feathery and fairy looking. I don't know, I kind of like it. On my desk, I have a, a Calathea rufa barba, and I love this plant so much. It's soft. <laughs> it's fuzzy and all you can, all I want to do is touch it. I don't touch it that much. I don't think you're supposed to touch plants that much, but like, it's just so fuzzy. I love it. It feels like a stuffed animal and it's so pretty. It's on my desk and I love it so much. I sit here on, at my chair and I can see it from where I'm sitting and I'm like, oh, look at that. And sometimes I, I just will stare at it for five minutes and then go back to work. <laughs> it's so soothing. Here we've got a rattlesnake calathea. This is my prize calathea. She just never gives me any drama. Kind of just does her own thing and I love her. Little baby snake plant in a turtle. And this is the big mama snake plant where I broke the leaf off and rooted the cutting. So she's not, I mean, a couple of leaves aren't doing the best, but she's happy there. In the bathroom, I have some randoms. I have a, a ZZ plant that, let me tell you, this plant when I got it home was in a substrate that was so wet, like the soil was just wet, like mud. And the whole thing started to rot and I lost a bunch of the fronds. And it, for a while, it just wasn't doing anything. And I put it outside on the porch this summer. We got new frond, <laughs> new frond, new frond. So it needs a lot of light and heat. Don't believe it when you say this easy plant doesn't need light, it wants it so bad. So can't wait till summer so I can put it outside again. My epipremnum Cebu Blue, this is all that's left of it. So I just took it out of the soil. I, it was, was dying. So I just took it out of the soil and put it in some water and I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna make it because we have not just one, we have one healthy leaf, but we have, this leaf is okay too. It's healthy, it's plump, it's, you know, cool. This leaf is probably something I have to take off and also this leaf, but I think if it roots, I'm gonna wait till the roots are nice and strong and I will repot this in some soil. This plant was struggling no matter what I did. It just wouldn't stay watered? I don't know. Maybe it was the soil. I don't know. Anyway, it's in rehab. <laughs> I, I rooted an avocado seed. <laughs> I, I rooted an avocado seed. And I still have this snake plant that I got from Marshall's. I'll never forget the day that I saw in Marshall's and I was like, is that a real plant? And I touched it and I was like, holy heck, that's a real snake plant. So I think it's like fernwood punk or something. I don't know. Anyway, took it home. It's grown a lot. It used to be in like the tiniest little pot. Now I put it in this sort of larger, slightly larger pot. It could probably stand to be repotted eventually, but it's super cute. It lives in the bathroom. It loves it. Okay, plants in the living room. We have prayer plant. That was a Maranta Lucanora there with a red version. It was a baby and now it's growing. We got a little snake plant baby here. That string of hearts kind of on the struggle bus, not gonna lie. We have a Raphidophora decursiva. That was doing something weird for a while, but now it's growing new leaves. My pothos, this golden pothos, was definitely on the struggle bus because it was somewhere where I just forgot to water it. Water it, So it was very stressed out and I moved it in here a couple of weeks ago so that I can remember to water it and I think it's doing much better, even though it looks a little rough. We also have another Monstera Adansonii, but this is a wide version. It was a baby. I do, I should let this climb because the leaves are just getting smaller. And I've got a Marble Pothos baby. This was something I broke off the plant inadvertently, but I rooted it and now it's still in plant and doing really well right there. I also have a Lemon Lime Philodendron that is doing so well. And here, I have to talk about this for a moment. This is my click and grow. And in the winter time, this is when I'm filming this, this has been so great. I'm growing edible plants and vegetables, and it is so easy to use. Last December, or I think late November, I actually did a whole 
I set this up and it was so fun. It was so easy. All you need is these little pods and you put them in and then you just fill it with water. The thing was so easy to put together and it's on a timer. It stays on for I think 16 or 18 hours a day. Comes on at seven, goes off at 11 and we have amazing growth. We've got some tomatoes and we've got some basil which we've eaten a lot of. If you just cut the, the big stalks of basil, the side stalks will continue to grow. So this is all new growth on this basil. So we always have fresh basil. We have some lettuce. Oh my gosh, it's been so delicious. We ate all of our cilantro. So this is the remainder of the cilantro. And we have peas. If you've ever, actually this stalk looks like it's probably good for finished, but this stock looks nice and fresh. So I can, maybe I'll cut this one down. But if you've ever eaten pea shoots in your salad, oh my God, they're so good. They taste like peas. So I highly recommend if you are feeling down in the dumps and you want to grow some edible food, Click and Grow is a great solution. I will link a code down below. This was sent to me by Click and Grow, but I have, oh my God, I love it so much. So, so I will give some information down below about how you can get your own Click and Grow. Oh, it's been so good. My husband and I actually have been talking about getting another one and putting it downstairs because we just want to grow more herbs. We're like a sucker for herbs. All right, more plants. We've got a little monster baby that our real estate agents gave to us when we moved. So he's doing really well. I have philodendron birkin. A lot of people like, like poop on this plant, like dunk on this, but I, why? It's so pretty. Like, look at this leaf that came out. Like she is, I mean, she, she's high style. And then we have this other like completely, oh, this is like almost white leaf coming out. But like, look at that. Like, why are you hating? Stop hating. I have a little baby syngonium that is just so cute. Um, oh no, my camera's overheating, stop. Okay, I changed the battery. Hopefully I can finish this before my camera explodes. So we have a little Haworthia, a group of other, there's a couple of Haworthias in here. My friend gave me this as a housewarming gift. And look at this, it was flowering. Like that's wild, it's totally, it's like winter and it was doing that, wild. I've got this Oxalis. Um, it's on the struggle bus in winter time. I think it takes a break, but in summertime I put it outside and it's so much happier. In the kitchen, we've got a couple of philodendrons and scandapsis. We have philodendron Brazil. I mean, this plant just does its thing. Like if you need something you can't kill in this pretty, dude, and you can, you, I don't wanna say, I don't like to say you can't kill plants, but like this, I mean, it's hard. It would be really hard to kill it. Like, and look how pretty the leaves are. Like, come on, get one. It's so easy, it just grows. Oh, it's so, it's so pretty. I also have a philodendron micans. This thing is so pretty. It has like little like soft velvety leaves. I should cut it cause it's looking a little bit like it needs a haircut, but I don't know. And I have a Scandapsis pectus exotica. This plant, I put this here when we moved. I was like, oh, I'll just put it up there for a minute. And it, it was so happy up there. I just kept it. It does look like it needs watered. So I will water both scandapsis when I finish this video. But look at the, look at those leaves. It's so pretty. And believe it or not, this is that plant, that spider plant's baby. That's, I rooted and planted. It's doing really well. It has its own little baby. So I don't know what, what's going on with the mother plant, but the baby is doing really well. I've got another Syngonium that is so cute. Another little Haworthia that has all of these little babies that I may need to separate from the mama, but they're so cute, look how cute. And here I have Hoya Crimson Princess. On the kitchen counter, we have a Calathea Mosaica. And this plant also was in a very wet substrate when I purchased it. It was doing this with new leaves. These are all new leaves that were just burned by whatever substrate they were in. So I took it, repotted it, and now it has all of these new leaves that look much healthier. So just be wary of whatever your plant is coming in. If it's like mud and it never gets dry, replant that sucker. You want something really well draining. I say even for calatheas that like it when to be you know wet constantly, you don't want them to be drowning. So um, hopefully this will improve over the next year or so but yeah look at that that was like when these were all new leaves and they just were damaged upon opening so hopefully every new leaf will look like that <laughs> and last but not least are the plants in the bedroom we only have a few of these so i've got a really wild philodendron Bro marks, that's just crazy. This plant has broken so many times when I moved it. I moved it three times and each time one of these little things broke off. This is a, a creeping, not a climbing philodendron. So it's just 
gangly and but I kind of love it and it just goes to these growth spurts like it's all these new leaves all the time it's so good if you want something really satisfying and something different like those lobe shaped leaves get philodendron brill marks the only thing about philodendrons is they do some sort of like sap thing where they have sappy well it's sap on their stems and stuff like I don't know well you can kind of see that there's like some sappy stuff and like hair and dust gets stuck to it it's so gross so just be mindful of that when you get <laughs> these some kinds of philodendrons I have one of those anthuriums down there that is maybe on the struggle bus a little bit I don't know what to do it's one of those flamingo flowers it had flowers but then it just kind of stopped so I think I'm gonna try and save it <laughs> in spring and then I have a Diffenbachia that is just not super happy right there. So I think I'm going to move it eventually to another spot. And last but not least is this little peace lily that I have over on my nightstand. And it's super happy there, especially next to the humidifier. <laughs> it's, having, it's having a good time. Okay, so that is my 2023 plant tour. You saw all of the struggle bus plants. You saw all the ones that were thriving. Plant keeping is a trial and error thing. Don't feel bad if your plant you have starts to struggle. Don't feel like you have a black thumb or anything. There's no such thing as a black thumb. You just learn from your experiences. Sometimes you can save plants and sometimes they're just beyond saving. So just do the best you can and enjoy your plants. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.